Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel where I upload tutorials on quantitative finance and derivatives usually in bite-sized format to help people better understand important financial topics. Today we're going to learn all about CDOs or collateralized debt obligations, why they exist, what they are used for and how they are structured. This is video four in my series on credit derivatives. If you want to watch the whole series, check out the credit derivatives playlist I've created. There'll be a link to it above. Okay, so firstly, let's answer the question, what are collateralized debt obligations? Collateralized debt obligations, or CDOs, are a type of asset-backed security where the underlying assets are bonds or other financial assets. A portfolio of bonds is assembled and the risk of losses on the entire portfolio are carved up and sold to different investor classes. The first CDO was issued in 1987 by Drexel Burnham Lambert. CDOs can be thought of as a pool of bonds that promises to deliver cash flows to investors in a prescribed sequence. This sequence is based on the cash flow the CDO collects from the pool of bonds or other assets that it owns. A CDO is made up of tranches or slices which deliver the cash flow from interest and principal payments from the pool of bonds in sequence based upon seniority. If some bonds default and the cash collected by the CDO is not sufficient to pay all of its investors, those in the lowest, most junior tranches are allocated losses first. The last tranche to suffer losses from defaults are the safest, most senior tranches of the CDO. As a consequence of these different treatments, credit ratings and interest rates vary by tranche, with the safest, most senior tranches paying the lowest rates and the riskiest tranches paying the highest rates to compensate these investors for the higher default risk. And hopefully that makes sense to you. It's just a risk return trade-off where the riskier bonds are paying a higher coupon, but of course there is a greater risk that you won't receive your principal back. A CDO might be made up of the following tranches in order of security. Senior AAA, Junior AAA, AA, A, Triple B and residual. The residual tranche is sometimes referred to as the equity tranche and is often retained by the issuer of the CDO as it can be very difficult to find a buyer for it. The triple A rated senior tranche is generally the first to receive cash flows and the last to absorb mortgage defaults or missed payments. As such it has the most predictable cash flow and is usually deemed to carry the lowest risk. On the other hand, the lowest rated tranches usually only receive principal and interest payments after all other tranches are paid. Furthermore, they're also first in line to absorb defaults and late payments. Depending on how spread out the entire CDO structure is, and depending on what the loan composition is, the equity tranche can generally become the toxic waste portion of the issue. It's worth noting that this is the most basic model of how CDOs are structured. CDOs can actually be structured in almost any manner, so investors can't presume that they are all the same. Early CDOs were diversified and were made up of a mix of loans and debt securities from a variety of industries and of a variety of types, including mortgages, student loans, aircraft leases and credit card debt. This diversification was a selling point as it implied that if there was a downturn in one sector and those loans defaulted, other types of debt would be less affected. The biggest selling point of CDOs was that they offered returns that were sometimes two to three percentage points higher than similarly rated corporate bonds. Now hopefully that should give you guys at home a bit of a hint that often when something is said to be of similar risk to something else, it should surprise you if it's paying significantly better. Anyhow, CDO issuance grew from $69 billion in 2000 to around $500 billion in 2006. Much of this growth was due to the demand for yield in a low interest rate environment. In practice, the pooling of a series of low quality or more speculative credit risk assets can result in the creation of some higher ranked credit products due to the tranching of the derivatives. 
CDOs are usually structured such that the highest tranche would receive a AAA credit rating and that's just that would be a specific goal starting out because essentially you're taking average quality bonds and you're making some really good ones and some really bad ones out of them and the reason that you would want to do that is simply that there's much more demand for really good for AAA rated bonds than there is for the average quality bonds that you started out with. By 2003, as the CDO market grew rapidly, subprime mortgages began to replace diversified portfolios of loans as collateral. And in a few minutes when we start talking about correlation, you'll see how that might matter. The global search for yield caused so many investors to purchase CDOs, trusting the credit rating without fully understanding the risks, and in truth without really understanding what a CDO was. By 2004, mortgage-backed securities, or MBS, accounted for more than half of the collateral in CDOs, and the demand for new CDOs began to drive the market for mortgage origination, in particular for lower credit quality loans. Towards the peak of the credit boom, there was so much more demand for CDOs than supply of loans, that CDOs were being created by packaging up the low-rated tranches of mortgage back securities and CDOs. Synthetic CDOs became a popular product in the mid-2000s, where the underlying was a pool of CDS, a type of credit derivative described in my last video, not actual bonds. CDO squared was a term used to describe collateralized debt obligations backed primarily by the lower rated tranches of other CDOs. Now hopefully you can see that it's becoming more and more of a problem because if you start out with a bunch of average bonds and make some good bonds and some bad bonds out of that. Then if you take those bad bonds and put them back through the machine and try and make more good bonds from it, it's, it's quite a problematic idea because quite simply they're already the dregs of the last uh, process that you went through. So anyhow, who buys CDOs or who bought CDOs when they were popular? Generally speaking, it's rare for retail investors to directly own a CDO. Insurance companies, banks, pension funds, and investment managers and hedge funds are the typical buyers of these products. These institutions look to outperform treasury yields and will take what they hope is appropriate risk to outperform. Added risk yields higher return when the investment environment is healthy and when the economy is normal or strong. When things slow or when defaults rise, the opposite will happen and greater losses occur. CDO issuance fell dramatically after the financial crisis of 2007-2008, as you can see by the chart on screen right now because so many investors experienced large losses in these products and they got such a bad name that no one really wanted anything to do with them afterwards. CDOs, like everything else, do suffer from the garbage in, garbage out problem. In essence, you cannot assemble a filet steak from low quality hamburger meat. However, there is value in the overall idea of taking a pool of assets and allocating the different risks and returns to investors with different risk profiles. So let's talk about CDOs and default correlation, something I mentioned a little bit earlier. A pool of loans might be expected to experience a certain level of individual borrower defaults, but they should, under normal circumstances, not all happen at the same time. During times of financial crisis, however, defaults do become more highly correlated. This is particularly the case for the most stressed borrowers, whose loans increasingly made up the pools underlying CDOs. The default correlation assumed in pricing CDOs is key. It's a really important factor. If the correlation is low, meaning that there's not a strong relationship between the various loans in the portfolio, the senior tranches are then very safe and the junior tranches would be expected to be extremely risky. 
As the correlation gets higher, the junior tranches become less risky, relatively speaking, and the senior tranches become more risky. If the correlation is 1, meaning the perfect correlation, then the junior and senior tranches are equally risky. So as you can see in there, diversification really matters, and because diversification of course plays out as low correlation. Leading up to the financial crisis of 2000. 2007-2008, masses of CDOs and other similar instruments were created. CDOs embed within their pricing, and in particular embed within their ratings, various default assumptions. These were calculated by large numbers of credit and mortgage performance experts using complex models. The models were often built and run by physicists, and in the end, the real-world correlations and default probabilities varied significantly from the models designed by banks, insurance companies and asset managers. In 2013, the press reported on Deutsche Bank launching an $8.7 billion CDO with two tranches with interest rates ranging from 8% to 14.6%. In the low interest rate environment of 2013, investors in these products might at least be getting paid an interest rate that could compensate them for the risk that they were taking. CDOs most likely won't go away, since in principle they have powerful risk management capabilities. Products like these allow for risk diversification that otherwise might be quite concentrated. Both banks and credit rating agencies share significant responsibility for the CDO growth explosion, often when the issuers and rating agencies knew the assets to be of poor underlying quality. In the mid-2000s, along with investors who were investing in products that they did not understand in the hopes of getting a free lunch. So that's it for today on CDOs. All of these videos are based on my book, Trading and Pricing Financial Derivatives, which is linked to in the description below. Don't forget to click on the like button if you found this video helpful, and subscribe if you'd like to see other similar videos. I've just finished up with doing daily videos and have moved to a weekly upload schedule. If you have subscribed to my channel, but not yet clicked on the notification bell, now might be the time to do so, as going forward you won't be overwhelmed with daily content uploads as you would have been in the past. Anyway, have a great day. See you later. Bye.